Hello, we are the Frenzy Physicist Group. Our project is the heart disease predictor. As you can see at the top, there's some buttons you can press to help navigate throughout our page. Many people suffer from heart disease and it can be complicated and hard to diagnose. We wanted to make a project that would make it easier for doctors and regular people to handle heart disease. We did this using machine learning models such as neural networks uh, using data from Kaggle. The data set itself contains many variables such as age, chest pain type, resting blood pressure, and uh, cholesterol level to name a few. So uh, we used uh, various visualizations to analyze our data to see if there was any trends that could affect our uh, machine learning models. So I created the histograms and histograms are graphs that show the count distributions of different variables. So as you can see, this uh, histogram displays the ages of people with and without heart failure. Uh, people with heart failure were typically older than people without heart failure. And then if you scroll down, you can read uh, more on other histograms that I had. So within our data set, um, there were more males than females. And um, some, some variables weren't as uh, impactful on uh, determining whether someone had or did not have heart uh, disease because the graphs looked very similar. But one, one of the factors that we could say probably affects whether someone has heart disease is the maximum heart rate as people with heart failure typically had a lower maximum heart rate than people uh, without heart failure. So for the correlation matrix overall, they all had like a negligible to weak correlation. One especially is resting ECG, which had like a weak correlation for pretty much everything. Some outliers were ST slope and heart disease, which a moderate to strong correlation of 0 0.559. And then ST slope and old peak, which is a moderate to strong correlation of 0 0.502. But overall, it was all a, neg a negligible or weak correlation, which is actually good for training our data set. All right, so next we have box plots. Uh, box plots are a type of visualization that shows the distribution of data. So first we compared heart disease versus maximum heart rate. And we compared groups with and without heart disease. So here we can see that people without heart disease tend to have a higher maximum heart rate people without uh and we have some other uh box plots uh so for cholesterol and resting blood pressure uh we, we can see that the distribution is really similar across each of the box plots and so we can't we would think that uh resting blood pressure and cholesterol wouldn't really have an impact on whether you whether or not you have heart disease and for the last one, um, heart disease versus age, we can see a clear correlation. So people with heart disease tend to have a higher age than people without. Our next visualizations include pie charts. So the first pie chart shows the different types of chest pain and how common they were among both groups of patients with the majority being asymptomatic. And then in patients with heart disease, the majority were asymptomatic as well, 77.2%, with only around a third experiencing any pain, versus patients without heart disease, where only a quarter were asymptomatic and the majority did experience pain. And then our next pie charts show exercise angina, where the majority did not experience exercise angina. However, in patients with heart disease, the majority did, 85.2%. Versus patients without heart disease, where only a third experienced exercise in Jenna and a majority were asymptomatic. We also made a scatter plot matrix, which shows the scatter plots comparing all the continuous inputs in the data frame. I think this scatter plot matrix shows how. Even though not everything is directly related, there are general trends in the data. For example, age and max HR seem to be correlated with heart disease. And also age and resting BP seem to be correlated with each other. This shows that there are uh, some trends with certain variables, 
but not everything is directly related. Why don't we have uh, violin plots? They're very similar to box plots, except that you can actually see the data distribution uh, much easier. So uh, you can see that where the violin plots are wider, there's a lot more data in that area. And then where the violin plots are thinner, uh, that's where there's like little or no data. You can also see that the points that are noted there are actually outliers in the data. Uh, so looking at this example for cholesterol, where the orange group is the people that have heart disease and the blue group is the people that don't have heart disease, the people who don't have heart disease and the people who do have heart disease actually seem to have like a lot of data overlap. You can see because a lot of the peaks are like very uh, in like the same area. Uh, if you scroll down, you can click read more and then we can also go to a new page where there's more plots. Yeah, so this one is for age. Uh, you can see that a lot of the age is actually you know, well distributed, especially in the male, no heart disease group. Uh, because there's like uh, multiple peaks, which indicates that there's a lot of you know data distribution. Uh, if you scroll down more, we have the last one, which is the maximum heart rate, uh, as you can expect, right? Uh, people who don't have heart disease, a lot of the data is up uh, higher than the people who have heart disease. So obviously that means that more people who don't have heart disease have a higher heart rate. We go back. We also have multiple models because we tested various models to see which one would be the best one, such as decision trees, random forest, neural networks. Uh, so decision trees are essentially just a tree, right? Uh, the tree is made of multiple nodes or leaves, and then each of these leaves branch out. So we start at the top one. And so these nodes each have a specified value, right? And then our input value is gonna be compared in the node. So if the input value is like less than the value of the node, then it's gonna go one direction. And then if it's greater than it, then it's gonna go another direction. So, and then it just continues all the way down the tree until we get an output at the bottom. Uh, and then we also have add a boost, which is an ensemble learning method, which means that instead of just having one model, it trains multiple models at the same time. And then all of those learn from each other's mistakes. And then they all combine in a way to create a more optimized, better model overall. Another model we had was the random forest model, which is also an ensemble learning method that uses multiple decision trees to reach an outcome. Uh, we have a logistic regression model. Logistic regression model makes binary predictions based on the relationship between one or more independent variables. So basically, it um, classifies the data point uh, into one or more uh, into two groups based on where it is on the curve. Support vector classifier uses two groups of data and plots them on a graph. It then places a hyperplane between the data and splits the data so that any new data will be categorized into one of the two groups. So the naive base predicts the possibility of the classification of Y given the X values and then classifies the data point given the, uh, the classification with the highest probability. And then the K nearest neighbors, also known as KNN, finds the classification of the K nearest neighbors of a data point and then based on, and then makes that data point to have the classification of the one, the classification that was most prevalent. We also made a neural network. A neural network tries to simulate the human brain through layers and nodes. The data, get, the data gets passed through the input layer and then the hidden layers, and then ultimately an output layer, which are all connected through nodes. So our best models were Adaboost, KNN, and Random Forest, while our worst were MLP and our Random Forest with Grid Search. So our Random Forest had the highest scores overall, uh, the highest F1 score, recall accuracy, and precision, and its scores were very similar to the Adaboost model, which makes sense because they're both ensemble and tree-based methods. However, MLP and Decision Tree had lower scores. The MLP scores could have been impacted by not having enough layers or being too complex, and the decision tree probably wasn't strong enough on its own to make complex decisions. In order to optimize our results, we used grid search to tune the hyperparameters of the models, which did improve the decision tree scores, but harm the scores of the KNN in Random Forest. On our KNN with grid search, KNN, logistic regression, decision tree, Random Forest with grid search, and naive base model all had higher precision than recall scores, meaning they were more false negatives than false positives, 
which unfortunately can endanger a patient because it increases the likelihood of a patient's heart disease being ignored. In conclusion, we wanted to make different machine learning models to see if we can predict heart disease, and we did exactly that. In the end, we found that Adaboost, Vian Forest, and Kenyar's neighbors were our best models, while MLP and Vietnam Forest Grid were our worst models. If we had to improve our project for the future, we would try to reduce the number of false negatives since they are the most harmful when it comes to trying to diagnose heart disease. We would also try to use more complex models that could possibly be better at finding a trend and improve our accuracy.